Okay, now we're going to use synthetic division to find x-intercepts of a polynomial if we're given one of the x-intercepts already. Okay, so you might find some similarities between this and the example where we were factoring polynomials. They're really the same thing, but I'm going to go through this one just so you see how it all works. So here's my polynomial, you know, this 4x cubed thing, and I want to know, given that one of the x-intercepts is located at x equals negative 5, uh, what are the other x-intercepts? So the way you do this is, uh, you guessed it, using synthetic division, and I want to talk about what an x-intercept is again. Remember where x-intercepts come from in equations? That, that x-intercept of x equals negative 5 came from this, x plus 5. There's a factor of x plus 5 in this polynomial. That's what generated the x-intercept. So that means uh, we're going to do synthetic division using negative 5, right? We use the root or the x-intercept, whatever you want to call it, uh, right here to the left of the synthetic division bar. We're going to fill in the rest of it with the coefficients of our dividends, the top part of the fraction, um, or the polynomial right here. That's, that's where I'm pulling these from. Okay, so let's work through these real quick. Uh, negative 20, that makes negative 9. Holy cow, that's big. That makes 45. Uh, looks like another negative 9. Comes out to 45 again. 0. Okay, great. I'm glad to see 0 right there because that confirms that uh, x plus 5 is a factor, which I was relying on. Now, uh, at this point, being realistic, I would suggest you do not use synthetic division to continue factoring this problem. Let's rewrite this for the moment. Uh, I'm going to say f of x, and instead of writing this 4x cubed business up at the top, I'm going to write this having factored out x plus 5. Okay, and what's left? You have 4x squared minus 9x minus 9. You could continue factoring this using synthetic division if you knew what one of the factors was. Uh, we don't, so I'm going to suggest we use the big x on this guy. Um, okay, if you remember how to factor... When the first term is not 1, it's a little trickier. I'm going to multiply 4 times negative 9. That gives me negative 36. Drop down my negative 9 from the middle. Okay, that goes down here. Okay, and now we need two numbers which add up to negative 9, but they multiply to negative 36. So let's come over here and make a little factor tree. Uh, negative 36 times 1 is an option. Negative 18 times 2 works. Negative 12 times 3 works. And you know what? I'm not going to keep going because I just found it right there. Negative 12 and 3. So negative 12 and 3. And now we're going to go ahead and remember, I'm focusing on this right here. So if you see me ignoring x plus 5, we'll get to it later. Now I'm going to write... Uh, this 4x squared minus 9x minus 9 as uh, x minus 12 and x plus 3, right? I took those two side numbers. But remember, when you're dealing with one of these polynomials, which has a number in front of the x squared, the way we have to deal with that is by dividing each of these by whatever that number was. So in this case, I'm dividing by 4. And let's rewrite this. Uh, 12 over 4, that's 3. And 3 over 4 is not reducible. So I take that 4 and I bring it over in front of the x. So this becomes 4x plus 3. And I'm going to pause this right here. I want you to go ahead and confirm that this is the correct factoring for this polynomial right here. 4x squared minus 9x minus 9. Okay. Now, having done that, let's move on. Uh, remember that x plus 5 I told you not to forget? Well, let's just bring that back in here. f of x equals x plus 5 times this new factored bit we just found here, x minus 3, and 4x plus 3. That's the fully factored uh, polynomial. And believe me, it was easier doing this part with the big x than it would have been with synthetic division again, because we didn't know what the rest of the factors were. We'll get to that later um, in the next lesson. So now that I have my factors, remember what the problem wanted. Let's go back here and look at this. It says it wants the x-coordinates of all x-intercepts as comma-separated values. And it gives you an example here. If we had x-intercepts at negative 8 and 2 sevenths, it would want you to just say negative 8, comma, 2 sevenths. So 
Here's my x-intercepts. I have negative 5, I have positive 3, and I have negative 3 fourths, and you would just enter those as comma-separated values just like that.